In this video, we will be talking about the Picture Tools Format tab. So if you have this document open, we're starting here. And one of the things you'll notice is there is no Picture Tools Format tab up here. And that's because it doesn't show up unless you are clicking on a picture. So if you click on this cake down here, you see it shows up. But the moment you click off of it, that tab disappears. So what I want to do first is talk about um, the sprint print screen um, tool. On your keyboard, you should have a button that says print screen on it. And if you haven't ever used it before, now is the time to learn it. It's very useful. So if you want to take a screenshot of this whole screen, um, you just click on that button, print screen, on your keyboard. Um, now this is true for a PC. My print screen button forces me to hold the function key down at the same time when I press the print screen. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And then it stores the screenshot in memory. And below this line, all you got to do is press Control V. And it appears uh, right there like a picture. And so the image that shows up is a picture. And you see this little circle. You can rotate it around right here. Or you can make it smaller and bigger by grabbing the corners. But you'll notice you can't crop this. Uh, you, you know, if you want to just get the picture of this cake and you try to go down, uh, zoom in, it won't crop it. So that kind of stuff will be in the Format tab. And again, this, won't, this tab won't show up unless you've clicked on this picture. So there is a crop button over here you can press. And then these little black bars will show up. And now you can crop it down to the size you want. OK. Now what's cool about Word is it still maintains in memory what was cropped out of the picture. So if you uncrop the picture, you'll see the, the, the entire picture is still there. You can uncrop it, go back to its original, and uh, so it's, it is saved that way. Now, I, in the past, I used to use this print screen option all the time until someone introduced me to the snipping tool. Uh, I use the snipping tool on a weekly basis for lots of reasons. So in, on a PC or in, in Windows, you can go down to your uh, start uh, guide and type in snipping. Just type it in itself and click on snipping tool. And so this will bring up uh, a snipping tool uh, program. Click on new. And it's the very same thing as print screen, except you're highlighting the part of the screen that you want to take a picture of. So right here, I'm going to highlight this toolbar. I mean, this ruler, just for the heck of it. And so that copies that ruler in the memory, and now I can paste it below. So the difference between print screen and the snipping tool is the print screen captures the whole screen, while the snipping tool, you can just um, choose parts of the screen, or the whole screen for that matter. I use this all the time if I'm trying to grab, you know, just take a little snapshot of an icon and email it to somebody. You can always right click on whatever you uh, took a snapshot of and save the picture as well um, onto your desktop to email. Okay, moving on. So let's go to the original cake that you see. And every time I look at this cake, I want to eat all of it. I picture it like a as a two foot tall cake. Mm, okay. Anyway, um, you click on the picture, go to the format tab, and let's look at some of the options in here. One of the things um, is that it's pretty cool. Is you can remove the background. So if you click on remove background, let's see what happens. tries to find parts of the background of the image that's not part of the main picture and, and basically makes it clear. 
So this works really well with some pictures where the background is, you know, blue or, or the sky or some kind of consistent color. So that's a neat tool to know about. I'm going to undo that. Now, what if I wanted to make this cake face the other direction? What do you think you can do to make it face the other way? So basically mirroring the cake. There's, there might be an option in here. I've never actually looked for it because there's a really quick way to do it. You grab one side of the cake and you just start dragging it over to the other side of the cake and just keep dragging, dragging, dragging. We can even flip it upside down. Drag the bottom of the cake to the top of the cake and now it's upside down. So you can mirror these things diagonally as well. I mean, Make it diagonal, and now it's back to its original shape. So that's one cool option. Um, there's some other buttons in here that are pretty obvious. You can change the contrast um, and the brightness. The color, um, there is a grayscale right here, a grayscale picture of this cake, which is depressing to me. But you can make it grayscale. The reason I would make it grayscale is if you're printing, it's a good way to know what is it going to look like when you print it. Because if it's in the original is in color and you print it, who knows? You know, you may want to adjust the, you know, the the, the um, contrast before you print it or something like that. All right, let's make this cake back into color before I get too sad. Mmm, there we go. So. Um, you can put a border around any picture by simply just clicking on the border and you can, you know, change the style of the border, the color of the border, how thick you want the border to be, um, whether you want the border to have a dash shape to it or a straight line or, you know, a lot of options um, in there. So borders. But the, uh, the main thing I want to focus on for a few minutes here is is this stuff over here in the arrange section uh, so the position button and the wrap button okay so if I click on this picture and click on wrap text there's a bunch of options the current default is to be in line with text so you'll see it's slightly grayed out right there uh, meaning that's what's currently ch chosen Oops. And that's fine, but when you have it this way, it is being the picture is being treated kind of like text itself. So it, it's in line with the text. So if I were to, to delete, um, it's basically part of the text line itself. And so you're this is usually fine, but you might be limited when you do it this way. Um, so sometimes if you want that picture to appear, say, in the middle of the text or, you know, the text surrounding it, um, you have to choose um, one of these other options. So let's go ahead and choose square. And you'll notice now if I move this around, it it's kind of floating and forces the text to surround it. And so now it's be being treated like a picture in, in the sense that it's the it's independent of the text that surrounds it before we couldn't do this i mean when it's in line with text the way it is now if i try to move it around notice if i move it here or here it's it's almost like it's a word or you know itself it it's part of the the text line so um the, the reason i bring this up is because if you are in line with text, you are limited with what you can do. So sometimes you need to change it to one of these other options that treats it more like a picture. So for instance, if I want it to be behind the text, meaning I, I want it to be kind of a background image, I click on behind text. And see now I can move this around and the text is, is behind, or the picture is behind the text. You can't do this if you are in, in line with text because you can't, put text behind text. It's, you have to treat it like a picture. We could put it in front of the text as well. So let me show you an example of where this could come into play. So we have a uh, picture of a calculator here. 
and it is currently in line with text. So it's being treated like text. This arrow under this format tab is in front of text. So it is being treated like a picture in the sense that it can be moved around. See this arrow I can move around while this calculator I can't. It's it you can move it within the text itself, but it can't be um, surrounded by text. So a lot of times you may want to say, say I want this arrow to be in um, pointing at something, but I don't know, for whatever reason, maybe you want the arrow to be behind the calculator. Um, right now we can change the arrow to be behind the text. And if I choose that option, notice it's behind text, but wait a minute, this is a picture. It's behind the picture of the calculator. Um, but remember, the picture of the calculator is being treated like text because it's in line with text. So uh, you can change this up by converting this picture of a calculator by putting it, um, say, top and bottom. Ch changing it to top and bottom, and now it's being treated like a picture, and now we can make this picture, we can, oops, sorry, we can put it in front or behind as well of, of other pictures or texts. So let me undo, if I make this picture in line with text, Normally, you might want to group two things together. Say you want to take this calculator and this arrow and kind of combine them into one group. You can't do that unless both of them are being treated like text, I mean, like a picture, because you can't combine words with a picture. So if we change this calculator to be um, uh, treated like a picture where you can group it, um, right now, I'm trying to I'm trying to hold the shift key down and click on both of these to to select both of them, or hold the control key down. But it, it won't let me click on both. But it will if you change the option to make it one of the other ones besides in line with text. So I'll make it top and bottom. So now you can hold down the control key and click on one picture, click on the other picture, and now you can click on them both, um, which you weren't able to before. And now right click and group. Right click group. And now they're being treated like one group. And so you might have to go back to the tools and change it to be top and bottom. It must have um, held the uh, the parameter or the the properties of the arrow because anyway uh, what I'm getting at is now they're grouped together which you weren't able to do before and now if I click on that right if I right click on that group I can bring it to front or send it to back meaning uh, it's very, if you have multiple pictures and you want one on top of the other, or you want them to be behind the text, it's sim, it's, those options are right here when you right click. Same idea as the option right here to be behind text or in front of text. But the difference is when you right click and do bring to front, you can actually bring it forward versus bring it to front. Bring it forward moves it one step forward. Bring it to front brings it all the way forward. So if you have five pictures all laid over each other, then you can bring it forward one step at a time with this first option here. All right. So for instance, this arrow, I may want to point it at one of the, the number nine on the keyboard and see how it's behind. I can right click on it 
and bring it forward. And there it is. So that is all uh, for the picture tools format tab. You'll notice there was a drawing tools format tab if, if it was a drawing, um, which we'll cover uh, later in other, pretty much in the PowerPoint um, presentation since it's going to be more useful there. All right. If you haven't tried already, go ahead and practice this stuff. Thank you.